Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to create a paper mache sculpture. You're going to start by using newspaper, tape, and cardboard. Then you're going to be adding uh, paper mache paste and newspaper. And then you're going to be adding paint decorations to create a realistic and very high quality paper mache sculpture. For the second step, materials you will need are the drawings that you've done. You've done, should have done at least three, maybe up to five. You're going to need masking tape as well as several pieces of newspaper. Once you've completed your drawings, you're going to take a piece of newspaper and fold it. You're then going to crumple it up several times to make the paper loose and flexible. And you're going to be taking small amounts of tape, not a lot, to secure and hold the newspaper together. Right now, I'm working on the body of my bird and trying to create an oval-like shape. Again, use just enough tape to hold it in place. Don't cover your entire newspaper with tape. Here's, an, here's a non-example. Do not do this. Do not just take your roll of tape and wrap it aimlessly around over and over again. That's going to not be a good life choice. Next, I'm going to be working on the head and the neck. Notice how I tore the piece of paper in half because it's going to be significantly smaller. And I'm going to leave a little bit of extra newspaper, not so tight for the head, and then wrap the tape a little bit tighter to make a narrower or smaller neck. That way I have a clear distinction between the head and the neck of my bird. Once you have both those assembled, I would attach them together with several pieces of tape. Again, don't put a lot of tape down so it's easily to move and change later on. To create the beak, use a little bit of tape and newspaper, or you could also use cardboard. My beak's not too large, so it's easily done with newspaper and tape. With your drawings, you're also going to need a placemat, box cutter, masking tape, pencil, as well as cardboard. Start by laying down your cardboard and lightly sketching the drawing of your bird's wing. When you're sketching, you want to do a lot of soft, light marks and then go back with a heavier contour line. Remember, your bird's wingspan of one wing is usually about the same length of the body. Next, lay down the placemat, take your box cutter, make sure it's locked in place the right length, and um, secure the cardboard with your hand. Again, notice how my hand is following my box cutter behind, not in the direction that I'm going. Add a lot of pressure down so the blade cuts through the cardboard and then remove the excess cardboard that you no longer need. I would then take another piece of cardboard, very carefully trace the first wing so you can create an identical second wing. Attach both wings together by laying it next to the body of your bird where you want it to go and use again small amounts of tape. We want to just secure them in place to make sure that they're how we want them before we cover and really strongly secure our cardboard wings to our newspaper body. Make sure you cover both sides and again just enough so it's secure. Now I'm taking a piece of cardboard and creating the tail or the feet of my bird. When I'm drawing I'm using again soft light marks and then going back with heavier darker marks. Then I'm using a box cutter again placing on a placemat like I've done before and cutting out and removing the excess cardboard. Your next step is to take the cardboard piece and attach it to the body, which is the newspaper. I would tape it similar to, a, to as you do with the wings. Again, a little bit on the top, a little bit on the bottom to secure it in place. If you need to add a little bit of volume or depth by adding newspaper to that cardboard piece, that helps to give it a little bit more depth. Once you're confident you have everything in place exactly as you want it, you're going to cover your entire creature with tape. You're going to make sure that you have no exposed newspaper anywhere visible on your creature. So you're carefully and thoughtfully adding tape. Notice how I'm going in several different angles. Sometimes I'm going vertical, sometimes I'm going horizontal. If you're working on um, the body, just make sure there's no tape visible. If you're working on where cardboard connects to the body, try to really re-secure that in several different ways, angles, and positions. So I'm using a cross hatch pattern and other angles to really secure that tape to the cardboard. What you don't need to do is cover the whole cardboard with tape. That is unnecessary. So the tape that I'm putting on the cardboard is just to secure the wings and the tail to the body. So again, no visible newspaper, all covered in tape. The next set of materials you will need is going to be your paper mache creature, newspaper laid out at your workstation, paper mache paste, as well as various sizes of newspaper pre-torn small to large. First, take a piece of newspaper, put
put it in the paper mache paste and let it hover over the container, letting it drip down. Use your hand to wipe away the excess paste. Next, apply this piece of newspaper on your creature. I usually start with the wing because it's the easiest. Notice how my rectangular pieces are starting at the top and then wrapping around the edge to the other side. When you're applying it to the top and it's wrapping around at their side, really make sure there's not flaps or folds. Really make sure it's flat against the cardboard. You do want the newspaper to overlap itself, but you don't want to have a lot of folds, flaps, and gaps. Once you've filled the entire wing, massage or smooth it out to make sure there's no wrinkles, folds, or flaps coming up off the texture of the cardboard. Do the same step for the other wing as well. Again, I'm overlapping the newspaper, making sure that there's no gaps where visible cardboard is, and really gonna go back and smooth down the surface so there's no textures or patterns. I'm gonna do the same process on the body. As you're working the body, you might change the size of the newspaper strips that you're using. Could be larger pieces on broad areas like the chest or the main part of the body, smaller pieces for the tail, feet, neck, head, or beak. So use the variety of pieces of newspaper sizes depending on the part of the creature that you're working on. Once you have your entire creature covered in paper mache paste newspaper, go back and make sure there's no gaps and smooth out all of the wet newspaper. You wanna make sure there's no wrinkles, folds, or flaps of texture. Your next step is to grab several different size paintbrushes, a cup of water to clean your brush, and the paint colors you need. Be sure to lay newspaper out on your table to help with cleanup. When you're decorating your sculpture, you wanna start with a base coat, which is the, uh, the majority of your project. For this one, I would recommend black for the majority of the areas on the back and the head. Underneath, however, on the stomach and the wings, I would have chose white. Black and other really dark colors are really dominant and it's difficult to get white or lighter colors on top. So keep that in mind and be strategic. If you're gonna be decorating any areas with a warm, lighter color like yellow, orange, or red, I'd recommend you do one coat of yellow or white first and then do your yellow, orange, or red on top so it's more solid and opaque. If you have any questions, please let me know.